All right, so for this video, I want to talk about channels in bot framework. Channels are the things that expose your bot to users. Okay, so if we have a look at this diagram of the architecture of bot framework, you can see that it's been broken up into three discrete functional areas. So from the left hand side, we have the bot application. This is the, the functionality of your bot. This is your, your web service that you've provided, which, which defines the business logic. It defines what the bot is going to do, okay? On the right-hand side, we have the channels. So the channels are the things that expose your bot to users. So these are social media applications, for example, Skype and Slack and SMS. We also have channels which are, you know, more traditional, like email. Um, we have something called the direct line channel, which allows you to consume a, a bot framework application through your own line of business application. So, but the point here is we've got two discrete components. We've got the bots on the left hand side, and then we've got the channels on the right hand side, and the two are agnostic of each other. You know, when you're writing your bot, you're not particularly thinking about how it's going to be consumed. There may be one or two sort of channel specific features that you want to take advantage of, but in general, you'd want to write your bot application once and have it consumed by any number of channels. So we have these two, two components, the bots and the channels, and the, the thing that glues these two components together is this, this thing called the bot connector. And the bot connector is, is a fabric of, of services and tools and you know, infrastructure to support the boss application and, and connect it to the channels and ultimately connect it to your end users. So you know the bot connector you can see here, it does things like message routing, state management, uh, things like tracking state, um, provides storage for your bot. It also provides the SDKs, so the, the development toolkits that you're using to develop your bot application um, are provided by the bot uh, connector. So hopefully that all makes sense and, and, and you can sort of get the idea that there's two sort of components, the bots and the channels, and then they're, they're, they're joined together through this bot connector uh, fabric. Okay, so just to kind of cement this in, we're going to have a look at a sample application, a, a sample bot, which um, exposes a um, an animated GIF um, to a user. Okay, it's really simple. I'll talk you through the code, and then we'll have a look at you know what that looks like in across the different channels. So before we have a look at the code, I, want, I just want to quickly show you this um, API. So I'm using a service from Giphy, which is basically giving me the, I think it's the top 20 trending animated GIFs, you know. So you can see here we've, we've done a HTTP GET request, and we've got back a JSON object, which has an array in there with a number of JSON objects within. And inside those JSON objects, we have you know some metadata about the the GIF, and also we have the GIF itself. So there's a, a number of different GIFs that we can have a look at, but you know I'll just pick one of these just to have a look at it, and you can see we've got the GIF rendering in the browser. So we're going to take advantage of this service um, with our bot application. I've created a set really simple bot application. Um, it's an ASP.NET Web API controller um, exposing an endpoint of uh, API forward slash messages, which is kind of the convention with bot framework. Um, it's an accept, ex, accepting a post which receives an activity. Um, we then create this dialog, and the dialog is the thing that um, queries Giphy and sends a response back to the user. So we just have a look and see see what that looks like. Um, we're receiving the inbound message here, okay. 
we're constructing an outbound message so we can reply, reply to the user. I'm doing a check here to say if the inbound message has been received on over SMS, then display a text message. And this is kind of channel specific behavior that I talked about. So in general, you want to keep it agnostic. But in this case, um, because my Twilio account is, a, is just a trial account, I don't have the support for M, uh, MMS images. Therefore, I just need to display a text, you know, just as an alternative. Okay, so that's if, if the message is SMS. If it's any other type of message, um, then we create a HTTP client. We do a HTTP get. We get the result back as a, as a JSON um, object. We, part, we pick a random GIF from, from the array of, of trending GIFs. We pull out the URL. We pull out the slug, which is just some, something we can use to describe the image. And then we respond on the outbound message with that image. Okay, pretty straightforward. We then send it on the, uh, using the, the context post the outbound message, which effectively delivers it to the, to the user. Okay, so that's the code. I've already um, deployed this out. So I'm just gonna come out of Visual Studio. I'm going to log into bot framework to show you the channel, sorry, the, the bot registration. If I have a look at my bots, already been registered. Um, so I've configured this to work with all the currently available channels at the moment. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 channels. Um, I'm going to demonstrate nine of these. Um, I'm not going to demonstrate the direct line channel because um, it's a bit more involved and I, I kind of want to run through it in more detail. So we'll, we'll come back to that in a later video. But all the other channels um, I'll demonstrate in some form. Most of them I'll be using apps to demonstrate, but obviously things like web chat um, and SMS I'll have to demonstrate slightly differently. So for the web chat, um, before we sort of move on to the phone, which I'm going to be using to demonstrate these, just wanted to show you the web chat. So the web chat is a channel, um, and it effectively gives you uh, a, an embeddable um, control, HTML control, which will connect to your um, to your bot. So it's a channel. You can embed it on your own website. You know, if you've got if you've got a public website and you just want to get up and running with a with a with a user experience for a bot, you can use this. You have limited support support for um, styling, but if you're happy enough with the look and feel of it, it you know it just works. So, you know, I can send a message to the to the bot and we'll get a response in time. There you go. So that's nice and nice and easy to use. You know you can literally just embed that um, you know should give us a a nice embed code that I can just embed on my web page. So really simple to get up, up and running really quickly. Okay, so that's kind of the configuration and how, how things look. Um, I'm gonna switch over to the phone now and we'll we'll um you know we'll see what these actually look like in a in a proper user scenario.
So hopefully that was useful. You've seen an, uh, you know, a simple bot application exposed over all the channels. Um, you've hopefully you get the idea that it's really quick and easy to to configure those channels. I didn't show you creating the channels, but you know, take my word for it when I say it took less than thirty minutes to do that. I think in the next video we're going to look at direct line and you know how you can how you can consume that in your own app because that's quite a quite an interesting channel. I'm going to make the code available on GitHub if you have a look in the description down below. Um, there'll be a link to the the GitHub repository where you can clone and have a play around with this yourself. Um, until the next video, thank you very much and see you next time.